Well, it's, I'm really, do I need this or not? What do I say? Pretend to. Um, I'm really amazed by how many people are here, and I'm just absolutely thrilled. <clears throat> Rip wanted me to talk until about uh, 10.25 with 15 minutes of welcome, so we're already late, so thank you. <laughs> what, I, what I will do is, is be briefer than I would otherwise, so there's more time, because you, you didn't come to talk to hear me talk, um, but I came to hear me talk, so I'm going to talk a little bit. What I, what I want to do is tell you a story first. Um, it's a story that goes back five, seven, almost 10, 10, 12 years ago, I guess. I was a dean in Wisconsin at the time, and the UW system, which was a really, that's the University of Wisconsin, sorry. Um, the UW system really was a good integrated system of higher education. That was before some big changes occurred in Wisconsin. Some of you have heard of some of the political changes in Wisconsin. Back then, the Board of Regents, which controlled 30, um, 13 and 13, 36 campuses. 26. That's not right. 26 campuses. <laughs> I used to be able to do math in my head, then I got older. Um, were really interested in technology. And they were interesting, interested in technology for all of the wrong reasons, it seemed to me. What they were pushing was each campus to put in a requirement that would require students to graduate. I mean, a graduation requirement for students that the institutions all had to demonstrate how students were using technology in some form. And there were a couple of us. I was the most vocal because I didn't care what people thought about me mostly. And unfortunately, that hasn't changed. Um, I pushed back enormously saying, as important as technology is, technology is a tool. Technology is not an end. And what we need to be able to do is make sure students use technology if they need to, given what it is they're doing. We need to make sure they wanted to have enforced sessions for faculty so they understood how to use the newest technology. And again, I was arguing technology is a tool. It, we never, from the beginning of, of time, we never had graduation requirements saying that students had to check eight books out of the library each quarter. Okay? Technology is no different than what the rest of the library is. It's a means to an end. This year, here at Evergreen, there's, there are an enormous number of people who have done an enormous amount of really hard work to make lots of changes in the way you see technology and the way you and your students are going to use technology. Throughout it all, what I'm really pleased to say is the, the view of all of that technology, the view of the transformation has always been, what can we do? And I say we, and it really has nothing to do with me. It has to do with a large number of people behind the scenes who are doing really important and really good work. They've constantly asked, what can we do to make the pedagogy that Evergreen is, is best known for and is, is, um, has been adopted by faculty and staff, what can we do to enhance that, not to get in the way of that? So all of the changes with the online record system, which I'm going to me mention in just a second, will enhance the face-to-face -face kind of interactions you have with your students. It's not going to replace any of that. It will make it even easier. And that's the most impressive thing that I've seen in all of my conversations with all of the technology people on campus and all of the changes that have occurred. They are additive. They're not replacing anything. They're not changing what you do. They're making what you do so much better. I don't have time, although I should make the time, to individually thank all of the people who have done an enormous amount of work, partly just for today, partly for the online record system and, and other pieces. But I can't do that because if we do that, we're not going to have time to do all the, you're not going to have time to learn all the things um, you're going to learn. So without mentioning any names, if you think you have had anything to do with all of the changes, all of the work, if you know you've spent the last year doing nothing but working on technology change, stand up and let the rest of us just thank them for the amazing work they did. I want to say just a couple more things. You're going to hear from Amy Betts. She's going to give you um, a preview, or I guess it's not a preview any longer, a view um, <laughs> of phase one of the online record system. I want to say two things about it. First, it really is, from what I've seen and the, the, the um, view that I've seen of it, it really is fabulous. Is it perfect? 
I don't think there's anything in the world that's perfect, but it's damn close. And it is only phase one. There will be more coming. But what it will allow you to do is all of the things you've wanted to do for years and haven't been able to. You can, you can submit evaluations of students much more easily, and you can track where they are and what's happened to them. You can edit evaluations. You can do, um, you can, you can do your whole program at one time in ways that you weren't able to do before. It will, it will smooth and ease the, the workflow for everybody. Um, it will allow you to collect in one place all of the student evaluations that are submitted for you for any program. It will allow you to collect in one place all of the student evaluate, of the self-evaluations of students in one place. You can print them much more easily. It will make your work so much more easy. If you're interested in advising, and I don't know any faculty member here who isn't, it will allow you to see what other people have said about your students now. It'll allow you to get a whole perspective on students, the kinds of things my understanding is our faculty here have been talking about for years that we've never had the ability to do. You will have much better information about your students. You will have, therefore, richer conversations with them. Again, none of this is to, is to get in the way of that face-to-face um, mentoring that is so essential to good pedagogy. It will just simply enhance it. One other piece that's um, worth mentioning, not in this room, but across campus, we have done a, almost a full sweep of virtually, I think it's, this is a fair statement, virtually every classroom on campus, and those that have not been mediated to the extent that they should have been or not at all, we've swept through, and I think we've made really good progress. The goal is to have every one of them mediated. And for the first time, it's only the first time in 42 years, but for the first time, we now have an ongoing um, policy of sequestering money. That's a great word when you use it appropriately. <laughs> sequestering money, so every year we have a plan to upgrade and improve and to fix technology in, the cl in our classrooms um, as, they, as there's a problem. Every room will on a regular basis be looked at and improved. Okay, so we're, the, the teaching environments that you have, that you will experience, should be better than they have been. That, again, it's designed to make your life with students that much easier. There are a couple of other things that I, I don't want to forget about. Actually, let me go back one second, because there's one other thing about the online record system that I meant to say that slipped my mind. The reason I think it's so good is, you know, there are, the reasons I think it's so good are twofold. First, the people doing the, the the really hard work to build it really are incredibly competent people. And they really care and they understand what the goal was. They fooled me. I'm going to be absolutely honest about it. When we started this process about a year and a half ago, I didn't want them to do it. Amy knows this, Rip knows this. I wanted to go out. I thought we could do it cheaper. I thought we could do it better. I thought there are plenty of places out there that sell these kinds of products. Why do we need to build our own? Why can't we just buy something over the over the counter, adapt it a little bit, and it'll work, and everybody else will have tested it already. I really knew I was right. As with so many things that I know, I was wrong. Okay? That product didn't exist, and the expertise that we needed really did exist here. The people on this campus built something that I didn't think was going to be possible. They built it faster than they thought was going to be possible certainly faster than I did, and they built it better. One of the reasons, and this is the second part, one of the reasons they built it so well is they were really willing to listen to faculty and staff. They were willing to have lots and lots of beta testing. They got feedback, and every time they had feedback, they listened carefully and they tried to incorporate it into design. And the product that we have now is a result of their hard work and your hard work. How many of you participated in, in one of the, in one of the testing sessions. How many of you gave feedback? Look at all those hands. Let's give a round of applause to all of you. And that's a model that, that, that kind of collaborative model that really is at the core of what Evergreen is about was used in, in this way and it, it really is important. Let me just say, in case it doesn't come up, let me just mention three more things, okay? Really quickly. Um, one is, there's a brand new science lab in lab two that has touch screen computers on every lab bench 
that will really aid teaching of physics in other science classes. That, that's new. It wasn't there before. It will make life better for you, easier for students, and more importantly, learning will, will improve. I'm nervous about saying this, this next piece. Everybody, except those of you who don't, love Moodle. Okay? I know that. I don't know what I've just said, so I clearly know that. I know how hard change is. We're in the middle of, of a three-quarter a three pilot program testing to see whether we're going to make a transition to Canvas. Transitions are really hard. We're not making that transition lightly. We're doing it where we have... How many of you are, are, have agreed to test? Look, that, and that's really impressive. I hope you give us really good feedback. The reason we're, we're trying this out is twofold. Almost everybody in the state has already made the transition. Maybe there's a reason for that. Um, all, I, I think it's true that all of our community college students that are transferring in will have been using Canvas. Our fellow institutions, the faculty and staff at those institutions are saying that Canvas seems to have to be more robust, easy to use, and is more robust. We want to make sure we stay um, competitive and compatible with all of these other schools and all of the uh, and the students who come here don't, don't feel disadvantaged. But we want to make sure it works for you. Rip and his team are doing a great job rolling it out and trying to see, is it right? So that's going on this year. We will make the transition only if enough people think it's a, it's, there's value added to do that. Fair statement? Fair statement. Okay. In the same way that we, we Rip and his group rolled out Red Square last year, um, we tried to see if it worked. It, it did some things, but it didn't gather enough attention. Nobody was wedded to it, so we backed away and we were doing something else. Same thing with, with Canvas. If there's real good reason to do it, we'll do it. If there's not good reason, we won't. Having said that, we're not, in the official sense of the word, we're not going to go with consensus. That is, not, no one person is going to have veto power. We're going to look collectively and see what, what the vast majority of people want. The vast majority of people want to stay where we are. That's where we're going to stay. All right, last point. Um, there is, I hope you've noticed, it has gotten better. There's a vastly upgraded wireless network system on campus. The dead spots that you are all familiar with, especially in SEM2, should no longer exist. However, if you want to use cell phones, you're still, it's still hopeless. <laughs> That's a different issue, different technology, nothing for today. I'm going to stop there because I think, I'm not sure, but I think my three minutes are up. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, thank Rip, thank you and all of the people who put this event on. Thank all of you for participating. And the people who really are, will be most grateful for all of the work you're doing today and how you implement this are our students. Because they will have a better experience because you will be able to interact with them differently and they will be able to interact with material differently because of everything we're learning today and over the course of uh, this year. Thanks very much. service and more of a one-stop shop for your media needs. Um, and part of my work group is here. There's Catherine Ford. Can you see Catherine? Yay! Okay. She is your point person for all your AV classroom support needs. And um, she's happy to help you with training and questions and all that stuff. And she sends out an email every year that says, hey, you need any training in the classrooms? And I believe there has been a lot of changes recently. So you might go in there 
and say, oh, what's the difference? So, especially, well, Kevin can tell you on all, all the details. So, if you ever have any questions, preferably before your first class, you may want to <laughs> contact Catherine and um, review where you're at. The other person who's here in my work group is Stephanie Zorn, who you all probably Stephanie. know. She's from yeah. Stephanie. Yeah. She's the head of instructional media and um, responsible for coordinating all the wonderful media workshops that we do. So, okay, I'll try to stop moving around. So, um, a lot of what I've been doing is, uh, a lot of what I've been doing this year besides this integration is also trying to make a lot of stuff uh, more available online. So if you go to the Media Services website, we're trying to focus your needs, like there's actually a section that says faculty, and we want to kind of focus your needs there rather than you having to search for our website for information. And then also you'll find for like media loan type requests, a lot of those forms are now online, and hopefully uh, the process has been a lot more streamlined and a lot easier for you guys. And for me personally, if you guys ever need um, a consultation for your media needs or how you want to incorporate media into your curriculum, Feel free to talk to me or Peter Randall, of course, or Stephanie, or pretty much anybody in media services. But um, that's one of the big things that we do because we're here to support media literacy. That's what I mean. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hello, all. My name is Mark Holm. Uh, I work at the help desk, I'm the lead there. Um, Today, or recently, we've been making a number of switches that you're probably aware of. If you've logged into email using OA, or the webmail system, you probably noticed a change. Um, that's one of the big changes that's happened over the summer. We will have a session today at 2 o'clock, so if you're having questions about those changes or would just like to kind of see what is uh, capable in the new email system or why we made the change, uh, please come by at 2 o'clock and we'll have a session on that. Uh, another thing that we have, are in the process of doing right now, we're in the beginning stages of it, is we're going to go to a two-factor authentication system. If you're trying to access uh, certain data like student files from wireless or outside of your office. In your office we've got private networks set up so it's a little bit different so the way that it's set up will continue to work. However, if you use a laptop, you're using wireless or you're accessing um, student data from home or a public area, we're going to have a two-factor authentication system. So one of them is you know, your username and password. The other thing we'll have is these little <coughs> fobs that generate a code that you'll have to enter in order to get access to the information. Another option is to use your smartphone and there's an app that generates that code. So you'll have basically these two options in terms of how you can access data outside of these secure areas. Um, what we have in the back is we have a sign-in sheet where you can choose whether you want to get one of these fobs or you want to use the app for your smartphone. Unfortunately, we're not handing these out today. We don't have the order in, but you can sign up for them. And what we'll do is then we'll have your name. When they come in, we can give that to you. Or if you sign up for the smartphone option, then, then we'll basically send you a text to your phone with that app connected to it, and then you can sign and get that that way. So that's going to be happening at uh, the help desk area that we've got set up in the back here. Uh, if you have any other questions that you know you just want to stop by, you know, in terms of your computer, things going on, that you normally go downstairs and get some help desk help for. Uh, myself, Lana, Chris are back there to help you guys out today. So, so I have to say thank you. So I feel like I should say hi, I'm Amy Vets, or Amy Evaluation Process Vets, because um, it feels like it should be my name now. Um, but I am here to just, I actually shouldn't say anything, Michael really gave a great overview of um, the changes in technology with regard to how you'll be processing your evaluations and how you'll see academic progress, and also from the student's view, we did change their view a little bit. 
um, with regard to the academic, how they'll input the academic statement and see their progress and do their evaluations of you. So uh, we have a session right after this to go over that. It's just an overview. It's, um, we're not going to go over everything that we will go over in other trainings that are also going to be offered three times a week, right? Starting week one. Starting week one. Um, so that's third opportunity. Just saying to come <laughs> and hear our message and um, so I just want to put that out there. I also am here, oh, and I'm also here just to make a different announcement on behalf of academics with regard to something you'll start seeing tomorrow in your when you log into your My Evergreen. Um, we have copyright um, acknowledgments and FERPA acknowledgments that will be coming up in your mind and you'll have to do them before you'll be able to get in. I think you just last week saw something around health benefits. So are you all with me? Have you seen that yet? No. Who's logged into my.evergreen? Who's logged in? That's oh. interesting. Okay. I thought they did all staff. Well, they, just, they did me. So <laughs> uh, maybe they're, they're, all three of these then probably might be coming out for you tomorrow. Um, so what it will mean is you'll have to read some acknowledgments, um, and this is to make sure that all of you are up to date on copyright law, the FERPA law, and and, and then there's uh, the state has some new health benefits information they want to make sure every single employee sees. So there's these things will pop up for you to acknowledge in your mind ever. Okay. Um, actually, to follow up with what Amy said, how, how many people here are interested in attending the evaluation system uh, uh, session that's following this one? It's competing with well, it's competing with nothing. The reason why I'm asking that question <laughs> is because um, there was a lot of there was a lot of information and there was a lot of interest in Moodle, and we got cut short because there was so much interest in interest in that. And I wanted to make sure that we could maybe um, provide an opportunity for a continuing Moodle, if Frank would be so kind as to provide um, uh, a place for people to gather and ask questions and get, because I think a lot of the information that was being passed in those sessions was really helpful for everyone else to hear. So it looks like there's enough people that we could have a concurrent session during that. So Frank, would you, would you be willing to do that? Of course, yeah. Great. So I think, um, the schedule is such that uh, the uh, evaluation system stuff is going to happen in 2617. And if uh, you want to move to 2619 for Moodle, other way. is it the other way? Other Correct. Way around. Moodle is going to be in 2617, and evaluation system is going to be in 2619 following this session. And that way, people can continue the conversations around some of the changes in Moodle and get more help with that. That would be great. Thanks, Frank. Uh, I wanted to mention a few things that haven't been mentioned so far, um, just covering the last bits. Um, there is this year a new mobile computing lab that we in academic computing are providing for programs to use. And they are Chromebooks. So they are Google Chromebooks that they have access to the web. They are basically browsers. And they are great ways to do Moodle introductions, they're a great way to do WordPress work, they're great ways to, I already have it signed up for a couple of programs, somebody's using it to look at Google Maps and look at some information online, TJ's going to be using that in his program. Here's the catch, is we have 26 of these, we're going to have a big cart, and we're going to say, we're going to reserve it just like any other computer lab. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, if you want to use this in the program, we will deliver it to where you are, and we will set it up for you. And you can use them for a duration that you specify. And then we'll pick them up, count them, bring them back. Okay. So this is a way that we're trying to encourage people to be using this resource in the spaces that they're already teaching. And given the upgrade of the wireless and the way things are working now, we're pretty confident this will be a really nice uh, computing lab for folks to use. There's a few caveats in there. I don't think we can take them down to the organic farm because little wheels over the trail probably wouldn't work that well. But anyway, here on campus, uh, in the campus core, we will we will get them to you and we will set them up for you. Okay, if you're interested in doing that, we have a little station over here for the Chromebooks, and we have a stack of them. I encourage you to go take a look at them and, and play with them and see if there's something that you might find interesting in your program. Okay, so that's brand new this year. It is a pilot project. It's two years, and if it proves to be successful, then I'm going to really try to gun for more of them. Okay, because I think it's kind of the way we're moving, and I'm really interested to see how people use them. Uh, 
There has been a Moodle upgrade, for those of you who don't know. And the reason why I'm mentioning that now, not only because I think it's, it looks so much better and the functionality is so much better, it also requires, not requires, but it, 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 it functions at a much higher level if your browsers are up to date. And so for those of you who don't necessarily go to the help desk and um, don't have an up-to-date machine, and you have laptops here, I highly suggest going and talking to the folks here and helping them, or I'm sorry, them helping you update the browsers in your machine, and you will find a much better experience when you're using Moodle, as well as other things, believe me. So please update your browsers if you, if you haven't in a while. Uh, the last pieces that I want to mention is that um, Amy mentioned uh, the trainings that we're going to be having. So we're going to be having three, sometimes four per week for the rest of the quarter for the evaluation systems. There is going to be a uh, to-do item in your my.evergreen that's going to show up tomorrow. That's going to say, <coughs> excuse me, click here if you would like to sign up for a training. And you can sign up for one or you can sign up for five. Uh, you can come every week if you want, okay? But please use that tool to sign up because if no one signs up for a session, we're going to cancel it. So um, my... Uh, feeling is is that probably most people will find it more interesting to sign up for this later in the quarter because that's when writing evaluations is a little bit more pressing than in week two. But at the same time, during evaluation week, we're going to be having one of the labs set aside solely for the purposes of helping people if they get stuck with evaluations during that week. Okay, so we're going to dedicate staff in the lab to helping people. So we're trying to put resources in front of you so that we can uh, help you when you need help. The last part about that is that Dylan in the back here has been really, really great in building a series of uh, uh, help videos, and there's going to be more put out um, by the time the quarter starts on how to use this system. It's all in the help wiki, and it's all organized by um, by uh, uh, workflow. So he's going to help do that. Okay, I'm sorry, he's going to finish doing that. Question. So, quick question about the evaluation system. So, how what are the how are the sessions that um, we're going to go into a little bit more depth in the trainings than we're going to go into today. Yeah, it, it'll be similar. Yeah. And so I think that that's all I have. There, I, the, there's there's one last person that I want to introduce, and that's Andrea Heisel. Did I pronounce that yes, right? Andrea is the new associate dean of the library, and she's going to talk a little bit about um, some of the changes that the, that's going to be happening in the library over the course of the next few months and uh, a new system that's going to be coming online in December, I think. So once Andrea's done, Andrea's done, I'm sorry, I always get that confused. Once Andrea's done, then uh, we'll move to our next session, and uh, thanks everybody for coming. Hey everybody, my name is Andrea Heisel. Um, I just started in June, and I'm really thrilled to be here with you today and to talk with you about exciting changes in the library now. <laughs> so um, we have a new, what's going to impact you is the new library search, right? And I just want to show you a preview of what that's going to look like. And as the semester or quarter progresses, we'll, we'll be sending out more communication and uh, actually asking for some volunteers to help us test how this is going to work for us, OK? So a little bit of background. Um, our library is part of a consortium of libraries called the Orbis Cascade Alliance. And can you use the microphone? Please? Oh, OK, sure. And you can move it over to your library. Can I take it off of here? Just yes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so we're part of a, an alliance of libraries here in the Pacific Northwest that has uh, contracted uh, for this new uh, search interface, basically, and backend system. But the backend system is boring. You just care about. Um, so because we're able to do this, what we're hoping is it's going to really enhance how you and your students do research and help them focus on what it is they're finding and how they're going to use that more appropriately, right? So they're not worried about using all these separate tools to find the information they need. They can go to this one place, start their research, and hopefully really think about narrowing down the research and focusing. So the search is, this is this beta, pre-beta, really, of how the search is going to look. Um, so we're going to have this nice single search box feature. And what's really great is it's going to look at both our print holdings and the electronic holdings that we have access to through the consortium and through purchasing that we've done. Um, so I think students are really going to love how this works. In fact, I come from an institution that's used this actual search uh, for six years, and 
as an instructor um, at my library, it really revolutionized how I taught students how to do research. Um, so once you do your search, you'll see that we have facets down the left-hand side where they can narrow down their search based on um, what kind of access they want. Do they want immediate electronic resources or do they want to find what's actually here in the library or requests from other libraries? Um, also, you'll see there's a topic area so they can start narrowing down there using the topic facet. Um, they can look at who the creator of that piece was, the dates, and there's really a lot more uh, ways that they can narrow down their research. But my screen got off. <laughs> um, what's really great when you're doing your own research is being able to save to your e-shelf. So it's um, much like a lot of online resources you use now, you can save what you found and come back later. Because um, we all know students like to do research for like five minutes and then they stop and they go do something else. So um, here they can save what they found and to their e-shelf and then pull it up later. Um, so you'll see there's the e-shelf and down below is the actual record for the item. And if it's an electronic article, the article would appear down below. And again, what's really great is that you have, um, it's both looking at print uh, book resources as well as articles. So um, if they want to do kind of a really broad search in an area, they can pull both those print resources and electronic journal articles as well. Uh, what's a, re a really great facet, I don't know if you can see it in the back, uh, there's a link for peer-reviewed journals. So if you really want your students to focus on that scholarly research, that link right there is a really great link for students to have. Okay, so that's it, because uh, I don't want to overburden you with too much more information. Uh, but we're really excited about this. This is a really huge project that the library staff's undertaking, and um, one thing I want to reiterate to you is that we're here to help you through this process. And um, as we get ready to roll this out, um, if you want to meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, we're glad to help you figure out how to use this to further your research or your students as well. So, thank you. I have one last, really last announcement to make. And that is that I just found out about 20 minutes ago that the key fobs that Mark was talking about for the two-factor authentication and also the smartphone codes are going to be delivered next Wednesday. So that means that starting Wednesday, hopefully, more likely Thursday, we're going to hope to start passing these out to faculty so that when the quarter starts, you will be able to access the uh, evaluation system from wherever. Okay. So I just wanted to give you that quick update. I know, I'm very pleased to hear that. Anyways, okay, thanks everybody, thanks for coming, and uh, enjoy.